So in the last few videos, we built pretty much all of the RAM module. And in this video, I want to power it up, test it out, and uh, basically convince ourselves that it's working right. So we'll power it up, and it's on. You can see the clock is running. And we're going to switch to program mode. And so we have all zeros here. We have all zeros here, so if we push the button in program mode, it should write all zeros to memory. And OK. <laughs> We're, we're making progress. All right, so it looks like we wrote... Um, oh, I think I see what's going on. Oh, boy. So I'm just looking cl very closely here, and what I see... So first off, uh, I guess the, uh, kind of explain what's going through my mind here. So we wrote zeros here. We did not... We wrote ones here, and... and Whenever you see ones, uh, one thing to kind of think, or maybe a possibility, is that um, you know one is sort of the default input. So if something's not connected, you get a one because the, all the inputs on all these 7400 uh, series, 74 LS series chips um, are are pulled up to uh, they have like pull up resistors uh, on the inputs. So that makes me think that you know maybe this is hooked up sort of correctly. I guess we could test that actually if we maybe set that. Yeah, so we, if we set that bit, it's writing that there. If we turn that off, it's not writing it. But no matter what we set these two, I'm guessing it won't change. Yeah, so that doesn't, that does nothing happens there. So that makes me think that we got this hooked up right, we don't have this hooked up right. And the first thing that I notice, um, just just inspecting it, I see that um, I, I, I might be off <laughs> by, by a couple, uh, or off by one here. So the power should be going to pin 16 here, and I see it's going to pin uh, 15. And then also this this ground should be going uh, to pin 15. It looks like it's going to pin 14. But then I would expect. Oh yeah, okay. So I do have I do have this this input from the dip switch. Uh, bit two comes across, and that goes to pin 15. And of course, you can see that's correct. Um, but it's just these two wires are, are just off by one. So I just need to shift these over to the left. So let me pull the power off and do that. So this, shift over. And of course, you know, if this uh, if this chip wasn't powered, which it wasn't, you know, the power was, was not connected. Uh-oh, this has fallen out. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, so if this chip wasn't powered, then, you know, its outputs would be, would be floating. Um, and the inputs on these chips default to ones, and so whenever we do a write, it just it just writes all ones. So that explains the behavior that we saw. So now I need to figure out how to uh, find a good place for this ground. Can, can I get it to reach? Yeah, looks like that'll work. Okay, let's give this a try. So if we power it up. We get some just random stuff in memory there. But with these all zeros, if we write, we get all zeros. So it looks like that might have fixed it. So let's try setting a, a different pattern in here. And write that. Okay, looks like we write that. And if we switch to address one, we get some other random garbage. And if we go to all zeros here and write there, then we got all zeros. If we go back to address zero, we should see, yep, we see that pattern that's in address zero, address one. If we go to address two, we get random stuff, but we could put in, you know, some other pattern like that. If we go back to address zero, we see that. If we go to address one, we get zero. So it looks like we are able to put whatever data we want into memory by selecting the address here, selecting the data we want here, and pushing this button here to write that data in that address. So now, if we go to run mode, then we should be now using the memory address register here, and it looks like that's pointed to address zero, and so we're seeing what's in address zero there. Now in this case, if we want to go to address one, we've got to kind of set our, uh, our you know, our, a one on the bus here, so we want to set these top three bits to zero, and then of course the bottom bit will default to one when we when we set our read signal here. So this is our read. And actually, let me stop the clock for a second here. So if we say we want to, well, we'll write, I guess, from the from the uh, register's perspective, so we're going to write to the bus a one zero zero zero. Uh, so if we set this enabled there, then on the next clock pulse, we get a one. 
in our address register. And of course we see the zero because we have a zero in that location of, of memory. If we wanna go back to address zero, then we have to set all four of these bits low. So let's go ahead and set that fourth bit low. And so this signal is still inputting a, uh, a write signal. So on the next clock pulse, it should put a zero into the register here. And that goes to zero and we see uh, the, the memory that, or the, the data that's in that memory location zero. And we can try going to memory address two and on the next clock pulse, uh, whoops, did I, oh, I just have these wires mixed up. Uh, let me put these in the right order here so I'm not confused. There we go. So this should be address two on the next clock pulse. Yep, puts a two there. And then this is the data that we had uh, stored in address location two. So it looks like the memory address register is working. Um, that's great. Now, if we want to read this data from the, the bus, or read this data and put it on the bus, um, again, we're gonna connect the bus over here and we can hook up some LEDs just to, to see for now what's over here. And like I did before, I'm just gonna connect three of these LEDs just to give us an idea. So if we wanna output, uh, well, right now, so we have location two in our address register. And if we wanna take the data that's in location two and put that on the bus, then that's this signal here. We take that low and we see, well, at least the bottom three bits, it looks like we're outputting that. And I guess we can, we can move this LED here and see, yeah, that fourth bit is, is set there. And then the fifth bit should be off. Sixth bit should be off. The seventh bit should be on and the eighth bit should be off. Okay, so it looks like it's outputting this thing onto the bus when we tell it to, and then when we tell it not to, it doesn't. So then I think the only other thing we wanna test is make sure that when we wanna take data from the bus and put it into memory, uh, that we can do that. And so in that case, I'm gonna take these LEDs out of the way, and I'm gonna use these wires here to put a value on the bus. So again, you know, th these are gonna these are gonna default high. So I'm just gonna set a couple of these. I'm gonna set uh, this second bit low, and let's say the third bit low, uh, maybe the sixth bit low, and the seventh bit low. Just those four bits I'm gonna set low. And then I'm gonna use this signal down here, which is our our write signal. So you know, we've got this address one in the memory address register, so we see what's in memory location one here. We saw that we could output that to the bus. Now we have a value, that, a different value that we want to input from the bus and store in that memory location. And so if the, the control logic of the computer wants to do that, then it would set this high to say, I want to write to memory. Uh, and then on the next clock pulse, which, I don't know if you can see all of this, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just pulse the clock here and we should see this new data go into memory. And there it is. So that new data is in memory. Oh, and something, something interesting happened here. You see the address changed to all ones and that's because we're also writing to the memory address register. And normally that would never happen because you wouldn't write to the memory address register and the data at the same time. You'd want to, uh, to, to do one or the other. So let me back up a second and turn off the writing to writing the data to memory. Then I wanna go back to address one. Actually, let me just double check here. Address two, it looks like it wrote it there too. <laughs> we'll go back. Actually, might, maybe what would be easier here is, is we can use this reset signal and just reset to address zero. So we're here, we're at address zero um, and we wanna not write to the address register because we don't want to change the address. We only want to change the contents at that address. So we want to stay on address zero and then we want to write to that address this data. And so then on the next clock pulse, yes, it writes this data into memory. So I'm reasonably convinced that uh, that this is working now. Um, you know, it's not a total test of every uh, connection. So there might be like one bit that's not hooked up quite right. Um, and we'll, we'll probably find that later on when we start hooking everything up together and running more complex programs, things we'll see some subtle issues, which are always fun to troubleshoot, but uh, at least 
uh, at least at, a, at a, quick, uh, a quick sort of test, it looks like everything is, is working uh, more or less the way that we want. One other thing I'm going to do, um, just as kind of a convenience thing, is we've got all these little control signals everywhere. I'm going to, I'm going to label them um, just to make life a little bit easier for me. So if we go up to the clock, this signal here is the, the halt signal. So I'm just going to stick a little label there that says this is, this is halt. <laughs> which halts the clock. This is the memory address register in signal. Um, so when this, is, when this goes low, we're going to input a value into the memory address register. So I'm going to call that MI for memory address register in. And I've got the bar there because it's a active low, so normally we want that high. This is the RAM out signal. So uh, when this is when this goes low, this is an active low. When this goes low, it outputs the contents of RAM to the bus. So I'll mark that as RO for RAM out. And that's active low, so we'll keep that high normally. And then, of course, the input from uh, <coughs> input from the bus to RAM, we've got the RAM in signal down here. So I'll mark that as RI for RAM in. And that's active high, so I don't have the bar there. So normally that will be low, unless we're inputting from RAM. And then while we're here, since we've got the instruction register down here, I'll uh, label those as well. This is the instruction register out. So this will output whatever's on the in the instruction register to the bus. So that's the I-O, and that's an active low, so normally that'll be high, unless we're outputting the contents of the instruction register to the bus. And finally, uh, the, the instruction register in, uh, so this will input data from the bus and store it in the instruction register. And that's also active low, so that's I-I, and that normally that'll be high. There's actually one last thing that I want to do, which is when we're, for the RAM in, when we're writing data from the bus into RAM, uh, which you'll notice if we set this high, so we're RAM in, when the clock signal goes high, you see that this is all zeros. And that's because when the clock signal is high, we're writing for the entire duration of the, of the clock signal high. Really, what we want to do is write just on the leading edge of the clock. So, Right now, we're, we're NANDing the clock and the RAM in signal. Oops, you can't quite see that. We're NANDing the clock and the RAM in signal. So this, this uh, white uh, pin 1 here is the clock, and this is the RAM in signal. Um, but really what we want to do is we want to um, look at the RAM in signal and just the leading edge of the clock, and just at that moment where the clock goes high, not the entire time that it's high, we want to actually, that's the, that's the moment that we want to read data from the bus and put it into, into RAM here. So we can do a really simple edge detector circuit by pulling this pin low, and then instead of inputting the clock directly into that pin, if we, if we go through a capacitor, uh, then what will happen is uh, this will only be high for the time it takes the capacitor to charge through this resistor, right? Because the clock will go high, so we'll get 5 volts over here, um, and then, of course, we've got zero volts, or we've got ground here, and so this will charge through the capacitor. And while it's charging, uh, this pin will be high, but as soon as the capacitor charges, current will stop flowing through the capacitor, and this will go low again. So it'll only be high for, the, for sort of that moment that it takes for the capacitor to charge. So this is a, this is a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor, and this is a 1K resistor. So a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor and a 1k ohm resistor. And so if we want to know the time it takes for this to charge, we just multiply these together. But first we've got to get it into, into standard units. So 0 0.01 microfarads in standard units, which would be farads, would be 0 0.00000001 farads times, and then 1 uh, kilo ohm is 1000 ohms. And if we multiply these two together, basically we're just moving the decimal point over 3 here, so we get 0 0.00001, um, and then the answer will be in seconds. And that'll be the time that it takes for the capacitor to charge. 
And so in other words, 0 0.0001 seconds is going to be 10, 10 microseconds. So basically, uh, the, the write signal here that, that ends up uh, going to the 74LS189s, our, our actual RAM chips, uh, in, this, in this scenario is only going to be 10 microseconds. So it's just going to be for, for an instant, it's going to write whatever is on the bus in that instant when the clock goes high, which is, which is exactly the moment that we want uh, to, to register that. Um, so we can kind of test this out now. Um, so right now we have this value in, in the bus. If we just change one of these bits to something else, um, we've got our RAM in, oops, can't quite see, we've got our RAM in signal high here. Uh, so on the next clock cycle, it should write that value in here. Uh, we'll just change this, this, this bit here to high. And so on that clock signal, you see it goes high. Um, and it doesn't matter how long that clock signal is, it's, it's just the first 10 microseconds of the clock uh, that it's using to, to clock in that new value. And so if we change this value on the bus, new clock, doesn't matter how long that clock signal is, it's the first 10 microseconds that clocks in that value. So now we have a little bit of an edge detector uh, here as well. So, so that pretty much should do it. This, this here is our RAM module. Um, I think we, we've pretty much got everything working, uh, at least the, the first initial tests that, that we can do here. Um, so I think in the, the next uh, videos, we'll either work on the um, program counter, which is a, a fairly simple circuit, or, or um, I think I'll do that first, and then and then I'll get into the uh, the actual output register, which is which is kind of interesting because we we're going to do a a binary to decimal converter.